Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I have a special guest. Yes. All right. Now, before you ladies get excited, this little handsome man is married. Hello. So, I want you to introduce yourself, my brother. My name is Mark DeLeon. Nice to speak with everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pat. No problem, no problem. I'd like you to share your testimony with me. Now, this is going to come in a couple of segments, so you guys have to stay, but you have to keep coming back and watching the videos because he's got some amazing testimonies. So check this out, and then see where the Lord leads you after you share your initial testimony, Mark. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, and I appreciate this opportunity and uh, the blessing to uh, speak with you and meet you. No problem. And, uh, Amen. Yeah, especially get my testimony in. And I know that this is uh, the Lord's will and, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason. I mm -hmm. truly believe that. And um, I'm here truly by the Lord, Lord's love and mercy. And yes. And great to, to even be able to breathe right now and to give my testimony <laughs> and his testimony yeah. um, for what he's done for us and mm -hmm. myself, my family. So I hope that people open their hearts and their minds and their souls to the Lord because uh, he's there, he's waiting and he's just like, coach, you know, let me in. <laughs> well, he is our coach, he's a great teacher and he's shown me um, a love that is so divine and nothing in this world can even compare to that. How did you experience, well, first of all, what made you give your heart to the Lord? Uh, I was, it was in November 24th 2016, um, just recently, um, I was talking to my, at the time we were with my fiance and we were talking um, about everything that we've experienced and I looked at her and I said, you know what, can I tell you something? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, I don't think I'm going to make it. And she's like, what? What do you mean? And I'm like, I feel like I'm not good enough. I feel like you know, I feel like I'm telling everyone how to get home, showing everyone how to get home, but I don't think, but I feel like I'm not going to make it. Mm. I feel like, you know, I didn't feel like I was good enough, no matter, for all my, of the things I've done in my life, everything I've ever done. And she looks at me, she's like, Mark, don't say that. She's like, that's the enemy trying to t make you doubt that the enemy shows you're stronger than that. Don't, don't listen to that. And I'm like, well, I know, I was like, I know, but I, I had that, I wasn't, I felt like I had all the right answers to give everyone to get home. All the directions, like, hey, you know, go home. Here it is. Here's the way. This is what you need to do. But I felt like I wasn't going to be on the ship <laughs> going mm -hmm. home. <laughs> I got you. So all of a sudden, uh, she's like, Mark, can I tell you something? Like, yeah. She's like, you've been talking to me. I'm like, what? I'm like, God's been talking to you. She's like, yeah. She's like, and she wanted... She, we we're going through some tough times and she wanted to leave and we didn't know the enemy was trying to separate us in every which way possible and we had no idea of the <clears throat> dynamics and the the rule of some of like how demonic attacks happen that they attack you mentally they attack you spiritually they attack you physically financially they'll attack your family they'll try and destroy you and cripple you in every which way possible that's right and they'll and we had no idea that, and I was blaming her, I was blaming the world, I had no idea at first. But yet I was fighting and fighting and fighting, and I had no clue how the enemy was still trying to get in. Well, let and, me ask you a question before you go any further. Uh -huh. my, my main question right now is, what made you even consider giving your heart to the Lord? What drove you to humility. that? Humility. Humility, just realizing the truth of what we've seen and how we were still there and to see that my wife what she went through my children went through and to know that by the videos and by the pictures but not even just that by the presence around us that has saved us and protected us and it says like in Psalms 91 he will be there he will cover us with his wings you know he no no stone shall touch us. Nothing will hurt us. Nothing will affect us. You know, I mean, he showed us that. And I went outside. I went outside the next day on November 25th. And I thought about the Lord because I knew he was real. I knew he was there. Yeah. And I had such a wall of 
stone around my heart that my heart was the most pure thing that was never tainted, never touched since I was a child because I've gone through such trauma after trauma after trauma that it was just sealed up. And it wasn't sealed up because I chose to. It was sealed up because of the trauma that I went through. So the Lord, I sat there on the porch. Outside, I opened up this missile, this missile, and um, I asked the Lord, I'm like, Lord, please show me what you want me to read. And all of a sudden, it opened up to my renewal, my baptismal promise. So I started reading it. And then tears started coming out of my eyes. And I had my phone on, and I was listening to the 8-tracks, and the song came on. Give me your all. Mm. That's everything to me. I have loved you. I will always love you. I will love you. I will never leave you. And the tears just came out harder, and I'm thinking, Lord, is that you? And all of a sudden, I, I forgave. I, I, I reached out, and I said, Lord, I forgive everyone. God, because every single person that has ever harmed me, ever offended me, I forgive my father, everyone I could remember. I just named them off, and the ones I couldn't, he knew in my heart. And then all of a sudden, I said, Lord, God, I need you. I cannot do this without you. Right. And the tears are already coming. The tears are already coming. And since the second, the second I spent that, the tears just poured out. The sorrows, of just everything just came out. And I stood up. I went inside my house. And I just dropped my knee. And the sorrow was just pouring out. And I thought about God, the Father. I thought about what he had gone through, what he sacrificed and lost for for us, for me, for every one of us. And then I thought about Jesus, what he went through, what he knew he was going to go through, and what he gave up for all of us. Right. And I thought about the Holy Spirit, and I thought about, I thought about everything, and the remorse just came out, the true remorse of feeling the shame of my, the sorrow come out for the sins that have offended, that have hurt them. The godly sorrow, thought. godly sorrow, yes, that exactly. works repentance. And all of a sudden, I sat there and I was praying, I could have been sorrow, and I leaned forward and my hands were palm up, but I was just on, basically on my face and on my chest, laying on the ground, but on my knees still. And I asked the Lord to forgive me. Beautiful. And I asked the Lord, Father, please forgive me. Jesus, please, I ask you to cleanse me. Please forgive me. And I asked him to wash me white as snow. And then all of a sudden, I felt this love. Mm. That's all I can explain is love. I felt the Holy Spirit before and that tingling around your whole entire body and your hair. And your <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I know and, that feeling, yes. Mm -hmm, and, you, you know, you put your palm up and you can feel the tingling go through mm -hmm. any time you make I, I call. I tell my children it's a direct line to God mm -hmm. when you have your palms up and you're praying. And it's the Holy Spirit <laughs> right through. And, you know, like, it's... Uh, my daughter was like, Dad, why are my fingers tingling? You know, and I, I don't. Direct connection right there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as soon as uh, as soon as I asked for repentance, and I repented, forgiveness, um, he hit me with that love, mm. and the Holy Spirit filled me. And it could, it was so powerful they could have knocked, they could have lifted me up off my feet if they want. It was that it filled everything in my body inside. Mm. And I smelled an aroma of like a, a sweet scent of like messy with flowers around me. Wow. And it's, you know, so fresh and so pure and so beautiful. And it was just like, and I, I knew I was just surrounded and the Holy Spirit was in me. God was there with me. And I wouldn't, um, it, it, I don't, I couldn't even tell you how long I was laying there like that and feeling the love of the Lord, feeling his mercy, feeling his grace, feeling his peace, everything I was in me uh, was being anointed right then and there. Um, I went in the bathroom shortly after, and I looked in my eyes, and I could even see my eyes were clear. Wow. <laughs> they were brighter. Wow. And I could, I was like, Father, you know, like, I could see my eyes. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I forgot what color they were. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I'm no joke, and I'm like, mm -mm. I know that, uh, you know, when other people go praying and helping delivering, uh, do, doing deliverances, they have someone there with them, because what they do is, I see why now, 
Yes. Because when they're praying for someone, they're helping these people. They need to be cleansed as well. Right. They need to be prayed for as well. And I was fighting for my family in mm. every which way and praying over them and praying for them and rebuking and binding these these parasites and these vermin and getting them out of our house and away from our family. But yet they're still trying to attach to me. Right. And they're afflicting me. And we, we saw this. We saw this. Um, but they knew that they couldn't do anything to me. But they were trying. And they were trying. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so, oh, yeah, they will try now, won't they? They oh, will yeah. try, even though they don't have a legal right. They will try. But I'm going to ask you yes, a quick question. And, just be, and, don't, and don't get me wrong, just because we get saved and we're sealed does not mean that they can't get at us another way. Right, right, exactly. Because they will still try to attack. Our, exactly. Mm -hmm. We're prone to attack in every which way. They can't touch us, like, within, like, um, these demons can't come and grab us anymore. But, like, we, we spoke about earlier. Yes. We break the laws in certain certain ways. They can come in in any which way. They can use other people to come at us. And we've seen that, too. We've right. seen that, too. Right. And, um, we're, it's like, green light, go. And, you know, you break the law, boom, green light. And they're not coming to play around. Right. They're, right. Now, they, they're not playing around with any one of us. Let me, uh, that, hold on, Mark. Really need to think again. Hold on, Mark. Uh, listen, you guys, um, what we're talking about now, uh, now that you know that he is a born again Christian, is Mark has had experiences, tremendous experiences, uh, with the, the demonic. And what we're dealing with now. We're switching channels, and we're going into a little bit of the demonic. We're going we're gonna to touch on it a little bit now, and then we're going to move into more of it on the next video. So this will just be another few minutes. But I just want you to know that when a person is a born-again Christian, they not only experience God, but they experience spiritual warfare as well. Because even though demons know they have no more right, they will still attempt to trespass. They will uh -huh. still try. So anyway, you cannot afford to leave doors open. I'm going to let Mark continue. But after he's finished with this segment, then we're going to come back with the next video. So don't go anywhere because it's going to get even deeper, you guys. Okay, go on, oh, Mark. Yeah. Sorry about that. I know, no worries. Thank you. Um... We, uh, we're finishing off with that, um, when I saw my eyes, I went to lie down and not to go to sleep, but to, I was listening to what my, my wife had said, was listen to my heart, that's where God speaks to, mm -hmm. not my mind, because my ears were ringing around because of the things that were going on around their house, and right. he was trying to silence my mind and my ears. So anyways, um, I would close my eyes and I saw this wavering light moving towards me. It was, this light was alive. It was that it almost looked like a wave, but it was moving closer and closer. Mm -hmm. And I opened my eyes, like, am I seeing that? I would close them, open them, see, and I, I would see it getting closer and closer. So I closed my eyes, and as it got closer, it every time it went like a wave, like an ocean wave, like a water wave, it pulsed in me like a heartbeat. And that same feeling filled me, and boom, filled me. And I felt myself filled with the same exact love, the same feeling that I just felt moments before. And I finally fell asleep. I woke up, turned on the TV, my wife was by me, and I saw a boxing match on. The first second, the instant I saw that match going on, I had to, I had to turn my head because I grew nauseous. I almost threw up. My oh body my. was completely healed, re rewired, my mind, everything in me was nothing but peace, tranquility, just nothing but love of the Lord and His true spirit flowing through me. Well, wait a minute. So, wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you. Did you just say you mm -hmm. threw up? I almost threw up. <laughs> wow. I almost threw up. Yeah, were you, were you heaving? Um, it was like, a, it, because I saw the boxing match, because there was violence on there, and my life had 
had seen so much violence and so much negative stuff that the second I saw that boxing match after I woke up, it made me want to throw up. That's how I was reborn. That's how free my whole being was completely innocent like a child again. Was so, pure again. so the violence turns you off, whereas before you gave your heart to the Lord, the violence didn't even bother you. Exactly. Look exactly. at how God changes a heart, you guys. You see what it's I mean? Like that. That's My what you call right true repentance, change. You change mm -hmm. from within and without. You change. Everyone that was around me that met, that saw me again after this, they could tell. They can tell. They could see it. They could feel it. They could. They, they can just see it in my whole being, my my posture, my facial uh, structure, just everything about me, how I hold myself, how I carry myself. Your whole demeanor. In my whole demeanor. Exactly. Everything is just. I have that old me is gone. What he a blessing. He died. And now I do whatever the Lord wants me to do. And I'm open. I am open. And, and people, you know, when you're saved, it doesn't mean that you'll never, ever sin. We are human. But you are more conscious. You are aware of God. You are aware of to do His will. You don't want anyone around you that is not of the Lord. And if you do come across them, you're, you're going to find it in an awkward position. Because you don't know what to really talk about, <laughs> you know, because you're thinking, you're growing, and the Lord is showing you how to, to adapt more. Because at first, I didn't know even how to even be around my own brother right. anymore. Well, right. my conversations are no longer the same. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, um, moving on to, uh, um, what was our next topic, Karen? I'm sorry. Oh, oh that's okay. We're going to do that on the next video. So hang on. Don't okay. go anywhere. When you, you uh -huh. know, when you hear me say goodbye, do not hang up. You stay on the line. <laughs> Thank you All so right, much, right. Mark, for sharing. See, you guys, this is, this is what I want to close with. When we give our hearts to the Lord, if you get up from your knees saying, Lord, forgive me for my sins in the name of Jesus, and you move on down the road, and the sins that you committed prior to that prayer are the same sins you commit after and you're comfortable with it, all you did was a physical gyration. You have not been saved. God knows when your heart is real. He knows when you mean it. You can give lip service all you want. It's just like a man that stands at the altar with his bride and he says, I do, I do, I do, I do. And when they get married, he don't, he don't, he don't, he don't. Bad English, but you get me. So just because you say you're committed does not mean you're committed. Just because you say that you've been changed doesn't mean you've been changed. And Jesus himself said, you will know them by the fruit they bear. In other words, put your money where your mouth is. Let's see your works back up all that good talk. Okay? Yeah. So anyway... We're going to stop here, and but, but Mark, I want to ask you a quick, well, I'll ask you on the next one. You know, we can go on and on. But anyway, God bless right, you, and hang on, and we'll be on the next video. Stay tuned.